salutations and welcome to Kung Pao Enter the Minute, Minute One. The opening frame, black, darkness, infinity. What does this all mean? Uh, uh, well, I guess it means that the movie hasn't started yet. <laughs> So before we begin, I guess I should talk about what I want to accomplish with this frivolously stupid idea. Well, I think I could pin the blame on a friend of mine, but at the same time, this just felt too stupid not to do. So basically, my friend Connor Coulson of Prometheus by Minute and several other by minutes podcasts i started uh, listening to their back catalog and we got chatting about the whole concept i've never really listened to this uh, particular genre before and connor was egging me on to do do something of this and i thought i don't really want to go into super analyzing mode i, I like analyzing media but sometimes i don't want to overanalyze and then i figured if it's going to be something I want to do for this format, it has to be something kind of silly and something I kind of love. And immediately the first movie that came to mind was Kung Pao. So I do have a few notes here. However, I figured in the great tradition of this particular movie, I am going to ad lib as much as possible. So let's just quickly go over what happened in this minute. We start off with the 20th Century Fox introduction. Anyone else kind of still miss that in front of the Star Wars movies? I'm probably the only one. So after all the big pompous and blowhardery of the Fox logo, we get into a caption. The caption states, This motion picture contains some footage from... Oh, do I do I even try and pronounce that? He... he uh... I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to try and sound problematic. But either way, it was also known as Tiger and Crane Fists. And in some other regions, I believe Savage Killers. A motion picture made in Hong Kong in 1976. But the voices and soundtrack were eliminated and new voices and soundtrack were inserted by the producers of this motion picture. We'll probably discuss this a bit later on, but basically this was a multi-year project for Oda Cook and his crew and several of those years were spent just going over hundreds, or if you would believe Steve, 100 movies and this was the 100th and they fell in love with it. Plus um, some years trying to track down the right shoes as an original footage, and this this took a long time to get made. This was released in 2002, but due to the nature of the production, it was a long time going, and it's you can see some of the dated references. It's at this point in the movie that our first bonus audio track starts, and that's the audio commentary with Steve Oderkirk, who plays the chosen one. He wrote and directed and did like 99.9% .9 of the voices. And Paul Marshall, the producer, editor, and the straight man to Steve Oedekirk's wackiness. And of course, Steve starts fake whining, and but that's kind of like half the characters sometimes as well. Ah, oh, this is such a catastrophe! That first part was really good with this the baby. Is, hand. No, this whole thing is. <laughs> we've ruined it! So we actually open up the movie with a shot of a baby holding an oval pendant with a circle inside. I wonder if this is going to be a recurring theme or not. We also now get an establishing shot of an old wooden shack, and inside there's a family consisting of a mother and baby, and a father with two young children. The father is speaking Mandarin, I believe? And these are the only characters in the entire movie that are not overdubbed. This shot, like most of the other footage in the movie, was shot to mimic all the compositions and directions of the original footage. So there's no dolly shots, or at least minimal dolly shots, all with zooms and quick cuts and stuff like that. I would say that in hindsight, this footage is probably the least accurate style-wise to the ones. I don't think they probably put as much effort into trying matching it, but that's something we can discuss some further in, in a the next few minutes because this doesn't last that long 
I would probably play an audio clip of this, but they're not saying anything. This is going to be interesting for me as an editor, because uh, whereas Connor will talk about the dialogue at the beginning of End of the Scenes, I want to play around with this. And if there is a sentence that's cut in half, I'm going to keep it cut in half. It's all comedy, ladies and gentlemen, and just like this movie, it might not work for everyone. This movie is currently sitting at like some like 13% on, I think it's Rotten Tomatoes, or it could be Metacritic. I think it's, I think it's both these. This is a low-rated critical film, but this is a cult hit. I adore this film. Some of the jokes don't land, but the fact is, it's one of those movies that the jokes are coming at you thick and fast, and... I only met one person that actually hates this movie, and I'm not going to call him out, but you are wrong. This movie is great. It is a bad film. Let's be honest. It's not great cinema, but I appreciate and love this film, and I'll probably go into that more as we go along. And so let's conclude with the closing frame. The father looking, left the screen looking slightly worried. I wonder what's on his mind. Does this have anything to do with the plot? I mean, more than likely, I mean, this is literally the first minute of the film. It's going to be pretty boring film if, like, nothing's wrong at this stage. I mean, this is literally the inciting incident as we're seeing. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. I hope you enjoyed this uh, slow descent into madness. Uh, I do have a coffee account if you want to throw me some bucks for this kind of weird experiment I'm going on. I might reactivate my Patreon soon. If you would like to donate, please let me know and I'll reactivate it. Otherwise, please like, share, subscribe, do all the other social media stuff. I'll probably have a page up at some point. Otherwise, just go Google Fanboy Crossing. I'm sure you'll see my Facebook, my YouTube, and I don't know, anything else that's kind of semi-related. I'll probably have a Pornhub up at this point. I don't think I'm gonna press anything to there, but you never know. If you like this uh, particular weird movie, then definitely tell anyone else you like, who think you'll like it. Um, I hope it will be more entertaining as we go on, and I'll try and get some guests on. So, till next time, see ya.